Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name's Julia. Today I'm going to be doing a haul for basically the first three months of this year. So January, February, March 2019. I think I've got 18 or 19 books, which is really fun for me, but it's also... Um, so one of my goals that I listed in my uh, 2019 reading goals video, which I'll link down below, was that I wouldn't accumulate more books faster than I was reading books that I already owned. But I am because I have already bought more books than I have read. Oh, well, that's OK. Um, I'm still excited to have all these books. so I'm going to go through them all. I don't even know if this is all of them. I have a feeling there are more of them around the place and I just can't even remember what they are. So anyway, I'm just going to go straight through from the top. The first one, and I actually got this like late December 2018, but um, I'm sort of counting it for this year because it hasn't appeared in a haul video yet, is Wintering by Chrissy Neen. Chrissy Neen's an Australian writer who's been publishing for quite a while and has published quite a number of novels. Um, and I have never read her before. She, uh, her other stuff has been shortlisted for, or longlisted for the Stella Prize. Um, she's really done very well. So I'm looking forward to reading this. And I actually, I didn't buy this one. I received this from Amy from the channel Polly Reader, who's great, um, as part of a booktube Chris Kringle. So I'll just read you uh, the back. It's set in Tasmania, which is awesome because... I love books set in Tasmania and I love Tassie. I spend a lot of time there. Um, I'll just read the blurb. When Jessica's partner disappears into the dark Tasmanian forest, there is, of course, the mystery of what happened, the deserted car, the enigmatic final image on his phone. The strange circle of local women, widows of disappeared men with their edgy fellowship and unhinged theories, and there is the forest itself looming over this tiny settlement on a remote tip of the island. So... I think it's going to be kind of creepy. Um, it also says that Jessica, who I guess is the main character, is part of a community in which she is still a stranger, but her partner was not. So she's sort of learning about the secrets of the small community. Sounds really cool. Has a beautiful cover. So I hope to get to this one soon. In fact, hope to get to it during this month, during the Aussie April Readathon, but I'll see how I go. So that's the first one. Uh, the next lot, I'll just, the next couple I'll talk about just briefly was um, Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow and Wanda Smith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. So these are the first two in the Nevermore series. Um, I don't really need to say much about them. They're a middle grade adventure fantasy story. I found them really fun. They're not super original in the world building and some of the characterization, but overall I still found them very enjoyable um, and re just really, really fun and kind of endearing. So I look forward to reading more of those. The same day I bought those two, I bought Michael Ender's The Never Ending Story, which I loved the film so much as a kid, but I never read the book. So I thought I would get the book, basically, because I saw it and thought it looked cool. So there's that one. The next, sorry, I'm kind of ripping through these just because I've got so many. So the next few I actually got from a secondhand shop. Um, <coughs> I think I got them all for $1. Like all of them together I paid $1, which is pretty cool. They're not in the greatest condition. The first one is Rachel Cusk's Saving Agnes. I have never read Rachel Cusk before, actually, despite how beloved she is. And this was her very first novel from 1993, I think. Um, or about then, yet 93. I'll read the blurb for you. Agnes Day, sub-editor, suburbanite, failure extraordinaire, is unwell. Terminally middle class, incurably romantic and chronically confused by life's most basic questions, Agnes discovers disconcerting gaps in her general education which make recovery unlikely. Life and love go on without her. But with the barest minimum of cosmetic assistance, she can pass herself off as a success. Beneath her fiction, however, the burden of truth becomes harder to bear. So it's kind of a character study of this woman, Agnes. I, ha I did actually start this when I first got it. I read the first few chapters and hope to get back to it. And um, I did find the writing style a little bit... Um, 
hard to read, which is fine. I actually really enjoy dense writing styles that you have to work hard at to get into. But it almost felt like, not that I've read her later novels and, um, well, auto-fictional stuff, um, but I get the impression that this is probably like a very early iteration of what is now considered, like like she's has this mastery over her style. So I feel like this is probably an early version of that, but I still look forward to getting to it at some point soon. The next one was The Europeans by Henry James. I haven't read this one, so I was pretty happy to find it. I'll just read the back again. Uh, this Henry James fourth novel was based on a situation which must have been familiar to him when returning home from Europe, significantly perhaps the Europeans whom he introduces into a New England home um, are not Europeans but American cousins born and brought up um, in European countries. So sounds like kind of typical Henry James, that anxiety around um, like the new America and old England and the uncouthness of Americans and stuff, um, kind of like the same tension you get in Daisy Miller. I don't know because I haven't actually read this one, but that's what I'm getting from the back. But it's not very long, so hopefully I'll get to read that soon too. The next one I picked up from the secondhand shop on the same day was a middle grade fiction called Tenzi Farlow and the Home for Mislaid Children by Jen Storer. I hadn't heard of this before, um, but I thought it looked pretty cute. Um, dumped in the river Caron, hunted by an accursed river creature and betrayed by the wicked matron Pluckrose, Tenzi Farlow is in mortal danger. She has no parents, worse still she has no guardian angel. When she is thrown into the home for mislaid children, a gloomy orphanage where ravens attack, watchers hover over your head, and even the angels cannot be trusted, it seems like all hope is lost. But, you know, can she survive and be victorious? I did read the first few pages of this. Blah, blah. I did read the first few pages of this, and I admit I wasn't like totally hooked on the writing style. Um, but I'll probably still give it a go because it cost me like twenty cents. And even if I read it again and I don't like it, I can give it away because I haven't lost anything. So there's that one. This is by an Australian writer too. I should add. Uh, shortlisted for the Children's Book Council Award. The next one is um, another middle grade one, which is Escape to the Moon Islands, Quest of the Sunfish. So Quest of the Sunfish is the series and this is the first one in the series. It was shortlisted for the Readings Children's Prize a few years ago, which is a very well regarded children's prize in Australia. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos because I'm hoping to get to this for Aussie April because um, Marty McConaughey is an Australian writer. Comes highly endorsed by Garth Nix, so that's pretty good. It's basically a sailing adventure story um, with kids and they embark on an adventure that will test their ingenuity and friendship to the limits. There's pirates, um, oceans, uh, the Admiralty, an all-powerful navy that rules the oceans of the world. Um, so, yeah, it sounds right up my alley. I really like children's stories about sailing so that should be good and hopefully won't take me too long to read. Uh, the last one I got in that secondhand store haul which I thought was a pretty good find was this hardcover copy of The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood and it's in really good nick so I was pretty pleased to not have to pay much for this and I have confession never actually read any of Margaret Atwood so Hopefully this will be my first one. I know it's terrible. I'm actually not going to read the blurb on that one because I feel like a lot of people already know it and it was quite long and complex. Um, but hopefully I'll read it soon and report back on my thoughts on my very first Margaret Atwood novel. So the next six I actually got on sale at Aldi. It was a bunch of these Enid Blyton books. They're not like the nice, they're not, I mean, they're fine. They're just not like the most beautiful editions of Enid Blyton books. I um, had heaps of Eaton Blyton, Enid Blyton books when I was a child, but I have no idea where they are in a box somewhere at my house or my parents' house. I don't know. So these were only $4 each and I got The Wishing Chair, Wishing Chair Again, Adventures of the Wishing Chair, Magic Faraway Tree, Enchanted Wood and Folk of the Faraway Tree. And I thought these would be really good to read to my daughter probably in another year or so. Um, 
or for her to read. She's obsessed with reading. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of a good find, I thought. The last few I have, I bought new. So the first one I don't actually have in hard copy because I've already lent it to my sister-in-law was Say Hello by Carly Finlay, which I talked about in my recent wrap-up video. And <clears throat> so Say Hello, it's a non-fiction book. Carly Finlay is an Australian writer and she's a disabled writer. So it's sort of about, um, it's part memoir about her growing up with her disability. So she has a condition called ichthyosis, which has lots of different types, but the type she has means she has a very visible facial difference. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other, you know, quite painful symptoms as well. So it's sort of about a memoir about her having ichthyosis, but also sort of how to be, like half of it I would say would be directed at people with ichthyosis or a facial difference or a disability. And um, I suppose being a real encouragement to them um, because she talks about how she wished she had a book like that growing up because she didn't know anyone else with this condition and she found it really hard. But now that she's older and she's got like a really strong... Um, disabled community she has a lot of pride in her disability and leads a full and meaning well I mean she always had a full and meaningful life but she talks about how she really feels like she can own that now um, despite the ableism of society and the other half of the book I would say is directed at non-disabled people about how to be a better ally um, and more inclusive basically of disabled communities so it was really, really good. Uh, so good, that's why I've already lent it to someone. But I do recommend it if you can get your hands on it. Um, that day I also bought The Glad Shout by Alice Robinson. So this is Alice. Alice Robinson is also an Australian writer. She is from Victoria. She's actually a cousin of one of my best friends, which is how I got introduced to her. So my friend bought me Alice's first novel which were called Anchor Point which I loved I thought it was really really great and really underrated it was long listed for the Stella Prize but I was surprised it wasn't shortlisted um, at the time and this one just came out her second novel um, and I think it's so yeah I think it's sort of a, maybe a little bit dystopic and sort of has themes around climate change so after a catastrophic storm destroys Melbourne, Isabel flees to higher ground with her husband and young daughter. Food supplies run low, panic sets in and still no help arrives. To protect her daughter, Isabel must take drastic action. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pumped to read it. It's, yeah, I really, really liked her first novel and I thought her writing style was really excellent. So I'm excited to get to her next one especially it's like such a beautiful edition it's like this matte hardcover um yeah it's really nice so there's that one and the last one I think like the last one I have here with me I'm also really excited about is called Sea Shaken Houses A Lighthouse History from Edison to Fastnet by Tom Nancollers so this is a non-fiction book about lighthouses but not just um, lighthouses but lighthouses that have been built on like rocky outcrops out at sea so separate from the main body of land sounds very specific it's also <laughs> um, about those lighthouses in a very specific part of the UK but I am really into the sea and my own writing is about lighthouses at the moment a little bit. So I wanted to read this partly for research, but also just because it's a really beautiful book and I thought it sounded really cool. Hopefully I'll read it soon. I'm really, really excited about it. So I think that was all the books. That's all the books I have here with me. It's enough for one video anyway, and I hope to get to many of them soon. If you've read any of them, please let me know because I've only read a few. Um, and hopefully I don't accumulate too many more books but I've already ordered some online that I'm waiting for and had some sent by publishers so what can you do it's all very exciting to receive new books in the mail anyway so um, yeah let me know what you're reading guys and we'll chat soon bye